remote pocket of Australia lives an apex predator, the sawfish. But its survival at the top of the food chain is under threat. On this episode of Strike Force, an epic quest through some of the most rugged country in Australia. You say anything with big teeth, she's run. Richard and Jamie embark on a conservation crusade. Oh, look, 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 and although there's danger around every corner, so really all we are is walking croc bait. Nothing stops these guys doing whatever it takes. Do you right, Big Fella? Geez, he hasn't come up yet. Meet the Strike Force scientists. What a stunning animal! Venom expert Jamie Seymour. That animal can kill you in under two minutes. Marine biologist Richard Fitzpatrick. These things are powerful and fast. They risk their lives researching the world's most incredible animals. The stunning scenery of the Australian Northern Tip. Rugged terrain and remote waterways. A majestic home to a mysterious creature. The sawfish. They can grow over six meters long. Razor sharp teeth line their snouts to stun and hack apart their prey. But in a modern world, its ancient adaptation is its Achilles heel. Their toothy blade is easily tangled in fishing nets. Their noses hacked off and kept as trophies. Worldwide, the sawfish is at the brink of extinction and most people in the world have never even seen one. We always got to get up this early. It's 3 a.m. sake. So I'm of the opinion we should probably come up through the, through the gillies. Richard and Jamie prepare for an incredible mission to help preserve the endangered sawfish. We're about to head off on a major journey, sort of 12 to 14 hours, something like seven, 800 miles, to hopefully catch some sawfish. That's why we're here so early in the morning. It's 2.30, 3 a.m., I mean, way past my bedtime. But if we want to get to where we need to go and get camp set up in time, we need to set off really early. It's not just to here. We've then got to go all dirt the way road. down here towards uh, Burktown. So this is all dirt. We're hoping that um, it's, it's improved, it's dried out. Our causeway is just great big solid chunk of concrete um, with a few holes punched in it to let water through. They plan to capture and transport two live sawfish, a breeding pair for the Dallas World Aquarium in the U.S., to make some sawfish babies and help educate the public. We're really fortunate to be involved in this expedition that will hopefully teach the world about this amazing species. This is a serious expedition with serious amounts of equipment and personnel. Five trucks, 12 people, and two scientists from James Cook University who do a lot more than sterilize test tubes. The convoy sets off. It's a long trip, 12 hours one way. Their journey will take them from their base in Cairns across the rough and rocky tablelands of northern Queensland to the Gulf of Carpentaria and the remote Leichhardt River. Heading up the operation is Lyle Squire. His company, Cairns Marine, collects unique marine life for public aquariums around the world. We've just embarked upon our 12-hour journey to the Leichhardt River and we're towing behind us a custom-built trailer with a special holding tank in it that's been designed to be able to safely transport the sawfish. If the team are successful, they could make history. Freshwater sawfish have never before been bred in captivity. The further from civilization, the worse the roads get. But after 12 hours of solid road trip, they've made it to Sawfish City, the Leichhardt River. They're here to catch two sawfish, a male and a female. All right, guys, we've got some of those anchors there. We're going to pass a couple of But no time to appreciate the scenery. Grab that net. They've got work to do. 
We're going to go down to the river and uh, try and locate a site to launch the boats and then we'll be able to set about trying to get these sawfish. Meanwhile, Richard and Jamie try and find a good spot to set up camp. But it's not as easy as just pitching a tent. Setting up campsites in remote locations like this is really important from a safety point of view. We can't be close to the water because there's a chance we'll be eaten by saltwater crocodiles. You need a nice flat area so that everybody's comfortable. They also need to make sure there aren't rocks and logs and things around that things like snakes can hide under. But they can't be too far from the river. Once they catch both sawfish, they'll need to carry them back to camp. Not easy, across 800 meters of sandy riverbed. Before they put up their fishing nets, Lyle and two of his men do some river reconnaissance. Well, there's an enormous expanse of sand here. That's quite high, so. Oh, I don't know how we're going to get the boat in anywhere along here. At the river's edge, some bad news. It's dry season. The river's a fraction of its potential size. Well, this is very disappointing. We've got nothing to work with here. It's just way too shallow. The water levels may be just too low to get their nets in. Shallow water equals bad fishing for sawfish. Richard, you there, mate? You got a copy back? Yeah, I'm here, Lyle. How are you going down river? Over. Mate, not good. Not good at all. I'm really struggling to try and find a location that's suitable to put the nets in and strike. Richard the plans to call in a favor to help spot from the sky. I might go by the station and ask if we can borrow the helicopter for a little while so I can get up and give you some eyes in the sky. The local cattle rancher has a helicopter. From working up here before, we know the local station owner and he runs cattle up behind here. Give me an hour or two to organise a helicopter and I'll talk to you from um, overhead, over. Fantastic mate, that's great news. All standby on this channel, over and out. Richard out. But there's only enough room in the chopper for Richard. Get out of here. I'm so not talking to you. You always get the good jobs. Well, if you could learn Just to use get the in camera. The boat. Go on. Lyle and the team must drag the boats to a wider spot in the river. Through deep, soft sand. They'll hit the river and wait for Richard's instructions as he spots from overhead. Although the river may be deep enough to get a boat in, they're looking for a spot wide enough and deep enough to set the nets. Need to go that way. Yep, that way. Can you give us a few clues as to where the best place is in this river? Looks like a good deep water, about a click down the river, over. I see the corner you're talking about. We'll go and check it out now. Alright, looks good. So this is where Rich reckon we should be. Richard's found a spot he thinks will work. It's deep and wide. Time to set up the nets. Sort of amazing to think that, you know, three or four weeks ago you'd actually have been underwater there. Is that gonna be strong enough? It's incredible the strength in these roots. They must take turns to monitor the nets. We're quite hopeful that now we've finally got some gear in the water that we'll actually be able to start catching some sawfish. Lyle will take the first shift. Now that they have the net set, Jamie can head back to help set up camp. Oh wow, look at that! It's a scorpion! This is really cool. We've literally just set up camp, just started a fire, and we found a scorpion. This is great. And you always find things on field trips that you never thought you were going to find. Jamie's got a venom shopping list for one of his students back at the university. I'll actually spend some time tonight, see if we can't find some more. I mean, one this quickly, we're sure to find more tonight. And this is really cool. While camp bunkers down for the night, Venom lover Jamie's still raring to go. You've got to be really careful out here at night when you're chasing scorpions, especially when you're putting your fingers down in these really big cracks. I mean, there could be anything down here, let alone scorpions. 
Scorpion hunting by touch isn't the safest of strategies. So of course, Jamie's got a plan B. The interesting thing about scorpions is if you have the right equipment, a UV torch, they're really easy to find. Under ultraviolet light, scorpions glow in the dark. Fantastic. And nobody knows why these things fluoresce this bright green, but it's common you see it in every single scorpion that we know of. Jamie knows if he doesn't scare them, they won't sting him. Look at that. This one, a perfect candidate for his student's project. I've got a student back at the uni who's doing some work on a theory that goes with scorpions that if you have really big claws, your venom's not supposed to be all that strong. Little scorpions with little claws have a really potent venom, or at least they're supposed to. And there you have it, fluorescing up. Brilliant! And away he goes. What a cracker. Just as well that Rich isn't here. I mean, he really doesn't like venomous animals. After a successful hunt, Jamie heads back to camp. On the river, they've got movement in the nets. The long hours may have just paid off. Oh, something in the net. Need some assistance in a hurry. Over. Okay, that's what we got, eh? If we get a sawfish in there, if you'll feel it, the rostrum will typically do it in lots of two. But this sawfish mission just hit a snag. Not good at all. Of the floating log variety. Stickfish. Ah, it's caught just as a... Ah. I'll see this ending in tears. Oh, there's not much freeboard there. I thought this was bad enough during the day. I think we've got a school of timber. <laughs> so that'll be a, like a forest? <laughs> <laughs> but all this noise has woken up the neighbours. So if you grab that lead line... The scientists attempt to capture endangered sawfish to create a breeding pair they hope will help the survival of the species. Right. Gotta be positive about this, about this time of night. But only attract unwanted attention instead. These are saltwater crocodiles. Their diet can consist of large mammals, but anything with a heartbeat is fair game. All right. All right. But that net still looks a little bit sunken there, even though we've got that snag out. But the danger's worth it because there's something else in the net. And this time, it isn't a log. Oh, look, 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 look. They've caught a sawfish, a two meter female. Oh, you go, you good thing. Look at that. Hold it up, will you? Okay. Screw about some weight. Hang on, let me get in a better position to pivot. So we're going straight into the container? Yep. Okay. Grab that. Rostrum cover behind me. It's the first night, and bang, we've already caught our first sawfish, so it's an awesome sign. They've got 50% of their breeding pair. I mean, and this is their lifeline, this rostrum, isn't it? Oh, the, I mean, it's this a sensitive is a, organ. An amazing piece of equipment. To free the toothy saw, they must be careful. Razor sharp teeth can inflict major damage. A rubber brace is used to protect the sensitive blade. Well, this is good because it's only touching the teeth. Absolutely. And the teeth, um, you know, we looked at the animal to try and understand, well, you know, can they tolerate this? It doesn't stress the animal to have something attached Stuck to the to teeth. Yep. I'm a little excited there. Well, I can oh, mate. Pick it's... Up on it. <laughs> We've managed to release the sawfish from the net, and believe me, it wasn't an easy task. So now we've got to get the sawfish down the river to where we have the holding pen set up. It's basically an enclosed floating swimming pool and we can hold the female in there until we catch the male. They've made it. You want to support the body? Yeah, I'll, I'll get the one, two, two three, go. go. Got him? Alright. Okay, push that out of the way. Okay. Yep. Okay, once we you hold onto the rostrum, that's the I last thing that we let go of. Tail's gone. Okay. Okay. Alright, so you yep, take I got the it. eye cover off. Beautiful. They've got a healthy female, but they still need a Mr. Sawfish to round off their breeding pair. 
to go? Yep, three, two, one, go. There she goes. Beautiful. Okay. Continue this conversation on land, I think. That would be a very good idea. On the way back to camp, a sudden detour. They've spotted a harmless freshwater crocodile. A juvenile. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> this is a freshwater crocodile. Yep, the Johnson River crocodile. Beautiful little animal. Look at that. The yeah, um, saltwaters grow really big. They're feeding on you know mammals and big things, and they'll take people out, no problem. Look at those chompers. But these freshies, you know, they're feeding on fish and stuff like that, and just purely in the um, freshwater environment. Well, these get up to a lot. About seven or eight feet is fairly typical for a really large one. This freshie may only be half that size <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't pose a threat, but it's better not to push the friendship. After a big first day, the next morning is full of promise. As Lyle heads off for his shift watching the nets, Richard and Jamie prepare some electronic tags. Today, they're heading off on a side mission to help a fellow marine biologist also working in the area. We're going off to take a little scientific detour to go and catch up with sawfish researcher Sterling Peveril. We brought up a new kind of electronic tag which we're going to help him to attach to some sawfish. Sterling's on his way downriver to meet the guys. He works with the Queensland government as a fisheries biologist. But he first met the guys through his work at James Cook University. It's important to me, I've been, I've been researching sawfish now for the last 10 years and they're dear to my heart and you know I've seen their numbers dwindle somewhat and I know from historic records these animals have suffered terribly. Sterling tracks and monitors the sawfish populations through tag and release programs. The information collected in the upper reaches of the river using nets the same way as Lyle downriver. On his way to meet the team, he's caught something utterly shocking. Look at decidedly large. That's the story we're missing his rostrum. Jesus guts me. That's a critically endangered animal. No, that's just unacceptable. You can see, you see this poor animal's just had its rostrum cut clean off. And uh, you can't just cut the rostrum off an animal, mutilate an animal and expect it to live. It's likely the animal was caught in a fisherman's net. And instead of taking the time to free it, its blade has been cruelly hacked off instead. It'll get emaciated, it can't feed properly, it can't defend itself from crocodiles and sharks, and obviously it's going to die. To help Sterling protect these animals, Richard and Jamie have brought him electronic data tags. He'll use them to track the sawfish population. How you going, mate? Good, mate. How you going? Well, wait, Stella. Too bad. Well, I've got all the nets in the boat. We've got the uh, six-inch cord and uh, five-inch mono. Well, we've got some nice new toys for you to play with. These new little tags, and they'll um, track what the animals are doing in three dimensions, 24 hours a day. The more they know about how the animals live, the better they can be protected. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to catch a few, take them over to the bank, tag them, let them go. We'll take a DNA sample for, for further genetic analysis. It makes them extremely vulnerable to illegal netters because if they put a net in this water, just one, one net in this water hole, within 36 hours that animal's going to swim past that net and obviously get entangled. That's how vulnerable they are. A wee bit soft there. A wee bit? Ah. Uh, well, what the hell? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't lean on me! Don't lean on me! Very <laughs> 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 rich! <laughs> right? Here's thumb. 
You see anything with big teeth? Just run. The way we're going to catch these sawfish are the same way they get caught by fishermen, and that's using a net. Now, nets are illegal in this part of the river, but people still do it. It may be illegal to fish with nets, but with the correct permits, for scientific purposes, it's not a problem. If we get to catch a sawfish, we're going to have to take a heap of time to untangle it from the net. And that's why the fishermen simply hack the saw blade off. Once the sawfish is untangled, then we're going to attach the electronic tags to it. And then we're going to let it go, and then it'll start collecting data for us. Once a sawfish is tagged, the data is recorded by a device called an array. 48.764 East. It's an underwater network of data loggers stretching across over 1.5 kilometers of river. The array records the data transmitted from the tags. We have an array of these listening stations out. It's an underwater computer. It's got a hydrophone. And basically when we put the electronic tags on the animals, they transmit all their data. You know, what depth they are, how fast they're moving. And this records all the data. Meanwhile, downriver, Lyle and his team still wait to catch the elusive male sawfish. And he can't rely on Sterling's nets to help him. During the dry season, a waterfall separates the river in two. The area where Sterling works is above the waterfall. It's a protected area, so the sawfish have to stay put. Which means a captive population perfect for his research. Away a bit still. You got it. Yep, you got it. You got him. They hope to catch a sawfish, then tag it and release it. Whoa, here we go. They've got one. A sawfish success. Ooh. Yeah, mate. Oh, look at that. Because the sawfish's rostrum is so badly tangled, they must get it to shore to free it before it can be tagged. Oh, look at that mouth. Watch that saw. Watch that saw. Um, right. Slow it up, slow it up, slow it up. Slow it up. The team have to work fast. Still, I'm going to bring him in. The sawfish can only be out of the water for a short time. Holy smoke, I've never had one this entangled. And you guessed it, this close to the shore, they're in serious risk of being attacked by a crocodile. He's well and truly meshed up. The research team attempts to tag, then release a rare sawfish. But its toothy saw is badly tangled in the net. And razor sharp designed to tear apart the river fish it feeds on. After half an hour, the long tooth line snout is freed. Might just roll him back over here. Okay. To document the health of the resident population, Sterling logs some measurements. Coming in at uh, 86 inches. Blood samples. We're going to take a genetic sample. Okay. And DNA samples. Pin clip. That's all we need future analysis. After we've taken the measurements, it's time to attach one of the tags that we've brought up for Sterling. Right up. Yeah, one, two, three, go. And get them straight on the eyes. Yep. Hang on, hang on. Keep it. I attach the tag to the snout of the sawfish using a bit of wire, and it won't affect the natural behavior of the animal at all. A sawfish shares similarities between sharks and rays. It has a flat underside, and spends much of its time lying flat on the riverbed. In a couple of months' time, that wire will corrode and the tag is going to fall off. But the tag transmits the data to the array, so we'll have all the data. We're going to count his teeth, Rich, if okay. we could, on the left-hand side and on the right. As you, as you Left look, first. As Jamie's looking at it. A sawfish has the same number of teeth all its life. 18. But Sterling is checking for any variation in number amongst the river resident population. So it's 16, 18 and 16. Okay. Every aspect of physiology, another piece of the puzzle. We can let her go. Okay, you're, you're on right. your own. Right. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Give him a shove. We'll push. Oh. Come on, girl, off you go. 
tagging sawfish, mission accomplished. Push. Oh. Sterling will stick around for a few weeks and continue to tag. Look at that, you can see that tag moving already, like on the front. So it's definitely moving as much as the tail's moving. The array instantly begins recording its movements. Sterling hopes the data collected will provide critical insights into sawfish behavior and help protect future generations. Gone. Six to eight winches and you can't even see it. Well done, dude. Well done, buddy. Still, I... Mate, thank That's you what... very much for your help. It's no problem, man. <laughs> the grace of nature comes in all shapes and sizes. From the deepest... Oh, no, no, no! To the comfort of your own home... Oh, oh, dear! Oh, dear! Oh, that's not good. Catch a glimpse of the less refined side of the animal kingdom. Brand new season, Animals Gone Wild. Wednesday nights at 8.40 on Nat Geo Wild. Colgate Total gives you all of these important benefits in one toothpaste. Keep your mouth protected with Colgate Total. Colgate, the number one toothpaste brand, most recommended by dentists. It's time for a sweet escape. Hop on a floating island and hunt for Fabergé eggs and caged apples. Or climb to the top of the Macaron Tower and immerse yourself in a sea of soufflés and meringue clouds. To be honest, I think you should skip starter on main course. Let Master Patissier Eric Lenlard pamper you with a royal treatment. Wonderful. Brand new series, Glamour Puts, tomorrow night at 9.20 on Nat Geo People. This May, plan a trip of extremes with Nat Geo Wild. Time is running out as scientists go on a quest to save Earth's disappearing biodiversity. Brand new season, 1,000 Days for the Planet. From the harshest to the lushest, we've got Earth's second smallest continent covered. All new series, Europe's Great Wilderness. Plunge right into the epic showdown of the most fearsome creatures, Extreme Brute Force. Embark on a trip of extremes this May on Nat Geo Wild. It's day three of the expedition. Hopes were high after catching a female on the first night. But yesterday, Lyle and his team caught nothing. It's a real worry that Lyle and his team have gone for a whole day without catching a thing. We really need this male sawfish to make up the breeding pair. Okay, that's right. We're heading down river. Lyle's got one last net, so we're going to go down and look at our options. The other day I came down this section looking for somewhere to set a net. After getting to know the local waterways, Lyle found a place he wants to set his last net. That'd be a good spot for sawfish, you think? We're pretty desperate. Uh, it's really, this is the last option. The only way that we can get the set in is uh, someone will have to wade across there and uh, deposit the anchor up on that bank. Guess what, big fella? You always get all the good jobs, like going in the chopper, so you get this job as well. What? You can walk it out there. This is not a relaxing dip. These are croc-infested waters. All right, you're right. You start wandering out there. With zero water visibility, Richard could be centimeters from a crocodile and have no idea. Stop whinging and keep walking. The longer you whinge, the longer you'll be out there. That's perfect, mate. The net is quickly secured. While Richard keeps an eye on the water, Jamie gets busy with a hose. They need to fill the specialized sawfish transporter tank with water. The problem is, their hose doesn't reach all the way to the camp. So they have to fill it in stages. Put it down here. Right here? Yeah, and we'll run the hoses up. You take the water from here, load it into here, so we're going to put about a thousand gallons in here, and then it's got to come from here to the next stage, which is going to be three or four hundred feet on. Then you're going to move the pump, the generator and everything. We then pump the water from there to there, so on until we get it to the truck. 
After two hours of heavy work, the tank on the back of the truck is full of water to transport the sawfish. Back at the net, Richard's still on watch. Jamie and Lyle join in on watching the grass grow. You know, I'm getting a bit concerned. We're uh, fast running out of time and we, we don't have we don't have time available to us. We're going to have to pull this set very soon. In typical strike force style, as soon as they seem like giving up, something happens. How you doing out there, big fella? You still with us? Yeah, we're going to have to get out of here. Hey, right? hey, 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 look, look, look. Whoa, look Second cork along. You see that? Cool. It just started. Just dunk, dunk, dunk. There's a really good chance that could be a sawfish. This may just be a false alarm, a branch, a fish, or a crocodile. I'll, um, I'll just get my crocs while you guys are looking around there. Yeah, it's a little further in, Rich. Keep coming this way. Crocs are going to get not there. moving at the moment, but it was around here somewhere. I'll just stand Hang here on. and keep my eyes out Hang for crocs, Here's guys. One. Look, look, look. Sawfish. Oh, yeah. Sawfish, look. You beauty. Hang on, Alex. Uh, I'll see whether it's uh, male or female, but, but it's the long awaited male. Oh, it's a female. It's a female. Female. Hey, look, he's got another one. Oh, wow, there's two of them. What sex is it? It's a boy. Oh, oh you beauty. Yes. That's the pair. Right. We'll take the male Ooh. out first. Good one. Can we, rather than, yeah, just talking about this, can we get this out, guys? Because remember that we're still knee deep in crocodile infested waters. Right, let's get this Try guy and head into the snout. You untangle this. They've done it. They've caught a male sawfish. So now the hard work really begins. We have to get the sawfish from the holding pen over half a mile to the truck. So we have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let him settle. Two, three, go. The campsite is 800 meters away, across dense sand and in intense heat. If you thought this mission was almost over, you thought wrong. This sawfish is en route to the transporter truck Jamie filled with water earlier on. They've got to be super careful. They'll take the trip in stages. It stops the sawfish dying from dehydration. And it's a welcome break for the athletes. Not as fit as my rugby days. A 10 minute soak in the oxygen saturated water and they've got 400 meters to go. It doesn't seem as far looking that way. Yeah, but we've got to go through the camp and up to the truck. I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. Oh, OK, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, fine. it's not as far. You'll be yeah. right. You ready? One, two, three. I don't mind saying I'm exhausted. Can we uh, park closer to the river next time? <sighs> now for the main event. So we did our practice one with the small male. So now we've got the big female, huh? Uh, this is going to be challenging. Two meters of solid sawfish that's happier left alone. Yeah, she's... She's, she can see you. She can see me. Line you up. Oh. I'll get my arm up under here. Okay. Okay, are we good? Yep, we're good. Okay. Two, three. Yeah, stepping over. Okay. You've sort of come a little bit. Yep. Let's go, let's go. Put in. Through the... Oh, 
Okay. Rostrum. Still at the belly. Support under the belly. Under the belly. Under the belly. Under the belly. Oh. Got it? Yeah. Hit the tail. Someone got the tail. Let's get going, eh? Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that trip. They've got to secure all the equipment tight. The trip back's gonna be bumpy. 12 hours of solid road time. Much of it across gut-wrenching dirt roads. But minutes before they drive off, the whole trip's on the edge of collapse. The water has been seeping out because the truck's on a slight angle and um, we're just about to go and we've noticed that we're bogged already. Just add water for your very own instant tar pit. A stuck truck could mean the extinction of the entire mission. With a limited supply of oxygenated water for the fish, they need to get on the road ASAP. But jacking up the truck is only making matters worse. Now that we're on more of an angle, we're losing more water, so the problem's going to get aggravated rather than get better. We've got 12, 13 hours ahead of us, and uh, we haven't been able to roll two feet. When you've got nothing else to lose, throw everything you got at the problem, even if all you got is firewood. Yeah. Go for it! Careful, dude. It's one of those. Okay. Next one. Okay, the other way, Max. Go! Oh! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Oh, you good thing. <laughs> the road train has to stay on schedule. The safety of their VIP cargo depends on it. Making good time till Lyle blows a tire. Guys, we've got some problems here. Okay, we'll come back to you over. Stand by. Hang on to your peanuts. This road trip just hit major turbulence. If they can't get back on the road fast, the sawfish could die. Yeah, we've got to drag it. Jesus Christ. Okay. With 160 kilometers to go, they've got serious car trouble. Holy sh. We're on the wrong side of the road, and uh, yeah, it was a struggle to hold the vehicle on there with the... Uh, it's going to blow out when you're passing. Yeah, yeah. But it seems for Lyle, when it rains, it pours. The bolt holding the axle in place is broken, causing the truck to slump and flood water. We're in the middle of nowhere. You just can't fill these things up with water again. I mean, this, this is really, really serious. It's always a good time to have a tire go in it when you're passing a truck. Yeah, when you're overtaking. Let's get the jacks and let's get to it real quick. I've got it. Oh, does that fit? Yep. Oh, they're, they're on dreadfully tight and we're not having any success in budging them. Oh, oh. Alright, so when I lift this, we'll put the um, spare tire underneath it, so because... For safety. For safety. Look at that. With the clock ticking, the tire is jacked up and the wheel replaced. Okay. You have to have these done up so tight because when you're on the dirt roads and the corrugations, the nuts will come off. One tire down, but a busted axle to go. 
with the water quality constantly decreasing, it's a race against time. Yes, if we can hold it in place, it'll do the job. What but we, we have to hold that up there somehow. So Jamie gets creative. Good old gaffer tape. It's not busted till you can't fix it with this stuff. Jamie's got a roll of super strong tape. He hopes will bind the axle to the transmission. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, Paul. Hopefully this is fixed. Uh, let's just hope it holds. They pull out and hit the road. The success of the mission now rests in a roll of gaffer tape. Time lost could be the critical nail in the coffin. They pray that the sawfish will be okay. After a difficult 13 hour ride, the convoy finally rolls into base. Sawfish are hardy creatures but they've been in this small tank for a long time. It's the moment of reckoning. A scenic harbor, or a vast prairie, and even a deep ocean could become a predator's killing zone. They hunt, they attack with their lethal weapon. A single bite could kill. Deadly Jaws, next on Nat Geo Wild. I'm Simon Keyes. I'm not your average pest control. Little bugger. I liken my job more to a bomb okay. expert. Hey, hey, hey. Cut the wrong wire. <laughs> Boom. Quick. Same thing with my line of work. If I forget my gloves, right or drop my stick. <laughs> Piss off the wrong one of these guys. On the wrong day. Boom. Well, not boom. You're a toxic venom. More like lights out. I've got it. I love it. Brand new season, Snakes in the City, tonight at 8.40 on Nat Geo Wild. Dark and murky.